everybody welcome back to another creative tutorial today we're going to go over some more layer styles we're going to go over three of them today but they're all related and work together cohesively so we're going to make them make a video all about all three together we're going to use text for this video instead because these layer styles work best with text in my opinion you can use them for other things as well maybe some um, design work on like paintings for backgrounds and stuff like that i think what they might work very well with but we're going to use text just to see the effects a lot easier so this is a vector layer so they do work with vector layers so we're going to right click and go to layer style we're going to turn on the bevel and emboss and then shrink this a little bit so we can see so right away um, we have an inner bevel selected and you can see that the letters look like they're beveled out they look kind of 3d like they're kind of popping out at you and we have a couple different options to change how that looks. So, but first we can do an outer bevel, which looks like it's kind of popping out towards you, like the letters are raised up and the, everything else around it is kind of more away from you, further back. We have emboss. We have pillow emboss. And we have stroke emboss. Stroke emboss requires specific settings here to make it look proper so don't, I'm not gonna showcase that one right now I'm just gonna stick with inner bevel mainly because I was using outer bevel before and I, I was recording this and I crashed because I messed up the size and it, it was too big to process basically in order to see everything properly I'm just gonna stick with inner bevel because it's easy to see so we can change the technique we can do a, a hard chisel We can do a soft chisel, and we can do the smooth. These aren't really going to be too apparent until we start increasing the size, so we're going to increase this just a little bit. You can see that changed it a little bit, so it looks like it's popping out at you a little bit more. We're going to lower the depth. So that looks a little bit softer. Okay, so I zoomed in so we can see things a little bit better. Better. So if we do the direction and have that down, so basically the light is coming from a different direction, you can see how that changes the look of the bevel. You can soften that a little bit to make it less harsh, so it looks a little bit more bubbly. So the lower the, the soften is, the more harsh it's going to be, and the softer it is, the more subtle it's going to look. So for the shading, which is the shadow here, we can change it. So if we want to change this to 50, it's the changing the altitude, like how high that bevel would technically be if it was popping out in 3D. See, it kind of removes a lot of the highlight a little bit so if we make this 100 oops you can see there's a very fine highlight in the middle and there's less shadow on, or i'm sorry there's less of um a directional shadow like if it's coming from the light was coming from the top there's not just all bright purple here it's all kind of in shadow around the edge and only this middle part is like the high point bring that back up sorry Close that by accident. And if we lower this, we'll say it, we'll make it five. It brings back like it, it's um, a lower point, but it still has that dramatic lighting in there. And we can change the highlight mode. So maybe we want it to look, we'll do a burn, see how that looks. And we'll change this to, let's see, I'll do a green to make it more dramatic. This has a really interesting effect. Do a multiply. Do a linear or lighter color. Linear dodge. Do an overlay. So basically, all these light points are going to have this green tint to it. Change the color. There we go. It's getting closer. So you can do some really cool effects with that too. You can change the opacity. So if you want it to be more green which kind of is going there with the blend mode 
can do that if you want just a slight color change or a slight um, shift in how that looks you can do that you can change the shadow maybe you want it to be change this color here put that at 100 percent you can see that the shadow is starting to turn a little more blue and we can do a saturation that totally did nothing <laughs> Well, it, it kind of, it, it's very subtle on my screen. I don't think you can see it. We will do a pin light. That might be dramatic. It's a little dramatic. So we've got a very interesting result so far. I changed the opacity to 22. There's a lot of cool things you can do with the bevel and emboss. So there's no gloss contour really. It's not really a thing yet. There are a couple options in the layer styles that aren't quite ready yet. We can change the angle of the shadow. So if you want to rotate it around, you can do that. You can use it by clicking on this little icon and just kind of spinning it around. So we can do 120. Wait for that to load. Do 180. There we go. So if you want it to look like the light's coming all from the right side, you can do and then texture. You can add texture to your whole text, which I think is pretty cool. So you don't have to like do a second layer, take a texture and overlay it or multiply it or grain merge or anything like that. You can just pick something, add it over the letters, and it has a pretty cool effect. You can change the scale. So if you want this to be smaller, you can do that. Actually, let's add the lizard scale. You can invert that. So basically when you invert it, the white becomes black and the black becomes white. Change the scale, make it, make it smaller. We'll make the depth the max. A little too much, we'll lower the depth. <laughs> there we go. Add some texture to it. So now we basically tweaked our text and gave it a little bit more oomph without having to do anything manually on our end. As a notation, the contour is technically not implemented yet, even though you can change the range slider. I haven't yet seen a appearance change by using this. I also may not have the right settings on for it, so just keep that in mind if you do go to use it. It may not actually do anything yet, it's still being worked on. I don't know when it will be finished, but I'm sure it's in the pipeline somewhere for the, the Krita devs. And that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions about this, let me, uh, leave them in the comments below, I'll try my best to answer them. If you learn something new, let me know. <laughs> you know, this is a pretty cool tool. Lots of good features that are easy to use and you can do some crazy stuff with it. Thank you guys for watching this video. And if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one.